Hello, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. My name is Ray Fuentes, LinkedIn's Community Director. LinkedIn is the go-to application for investing in the world's leading technology-enabled private companies. I'm excited to host today's X Space featuring XRPL Labs founder, Weetzy Wind. As the title of today's X Space states, today we'll be deep diving into the XRP ledger and Zahao smart contract functionality. Today we'll be going deep in the weeds in blockchain before sailing away into the weekend. For those of you who are new to Link2, Link2 is an investment application that can be downloaded onto any smartphone. Link2 offers investors worldwide the highest quality of late stage private companies with high growth potential. Companies like Coinbase, Robinhood, SoFi, and Marketa are some of the companies that were available on our platform before successfully exiting and going public. On our platform today, you'll find industry leaders like Ripple, Uphold, Circle, PolySign, Axiom Space, Epic Games, Discord, and even ourselves linked to. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from Weetzy, founder of XRPO Labs, well known for its flagship product, the Zum Wallet. Weetzy is a Dutch tech prodigy and blockchain innovator. From crafting his first Oracle web application at the age of 14 to pioneering on the XRP ledger, Weetzy's journey is inspiring and nothing short of extraordinary. When Weetzy isn't trailblazing in the blockchain ecosystem, you can find him playing the guitar to his parrots or outside gardening with his family soaking up the sun. With that being said, let's dive into all things smart contracts on the XRP ledger with Weetzy Wind. Weetzy, how you doing today, sir? Thanks, Ray. Thanks for the uh, for the intro. Doing uh, doing well. Ab absolutely, it's well well deserved, sir. Well, let let's kick things off here. No time to waste. Weetzy, what is the Zahao network and its relationship to the XRP ledger? Let's start with a little overview to give those who are new in the audience a little bit of a backstory or a foundation to work with. Yeah, happy to. Um, so uh, to those who have been listening to other spaces in the past weeks, I'm going to sound like a broken record player. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully there's some new information for them too. But um, some of the information has been shared, but I'm very glad to share it again. As you mentioned, there will be other lis listeners. Thank you, and, uh, This This is very interesting, I guess, for, for everyone because it's going to change um the the ecosystem i think for for uh for the better but tremendously so what what zahao the network is is uh actually a network that takes hooks live and hooks is something that people may or may ha not have heard from before it's the smart layer one smart contract technology my team has developed for the xrp ledger so uh, this this is going to change the entire proposition of the xrp ledger it has been traditionally uh, known for being fast, being cheap, and being, being very easy to use and code on. And uh, um, the thing it was missing was was composability, smart contracts, which was kind of limiting uh, to many developers who wanted to build creative stuff that wasn't natively available, right? You get the fast payments, you get the native decentralized exchange, you get some other features. But if you want more, if you want something else, if you want to add your own logic into the mix, it wasn't possible traditionally, or you needed a layer two solution, mm -hmm. which makes things harder and also less uh, less safe in, in, in many occasions. So when people wanted to do new things, creative things, enterprise things, uh, they, they, they move to usually an EVM chain. And it's such a waste of potential for the XRP ledger and the technology that we realized that for the next five years, the things we as a company are looking on building, we need. Uh, smart contracts. We need composability. We need our own business logic on the chain. And everyone we talked to had the same notion where the XRP ledger has a million good things, but it's missing this one major component. So three years ago, Richard, also in this space, Richard Holland and I started talking about this. And we, um, we, we actually had kind of similar ideas on how smart contracts could be even better than everything we have today. And we figured that if we would take all these ideas and then today's technology, uh, and we bring that into the XRPL, we get the best of both worlds and we get actually a platform that everyone, including ourselves, can use to realize our, our uh, long-term goals and, and not expand the crypto ecosystem, but basically bring new use cases to the ledger and maybe even use the XRPL without realizing you're using it. And uh, so we built Hooks, this smart contract technology, and we have been testing it a lot, and uh, it has been live on a test net for over a year. And at some point, it was time to take it live. 
and to uh, wrap up this phase of building hooks, uh, get it audited, and bring it to production, and then actually build uh, our, our, our long-term vision out on, on the XRPL with hooks. Now, shipping this technology to mainnet is uh, quite controversial and in, in some ways uh, potentially quite dangerous. So we realized at some point also, because we got some external input, that it might make a lot of sense to do this on a second network that speaks the same protocol and caters the same ecosystem. And then everyone can start building. You can start using it today. Uh, and uh, it plays nice with the existing protocols and wallets and, and, and libraries and implementations. And we can all get confident uh, with the technology. And then uh, in the future, take a look at how we're going to uh, do a migration path to mainnet. And then maybe, possibly, most likely, both networks will coexist uh, forever because there's a place for a network that speaks XRPL language, it speaks XRPL protocol, it plays nice with all the libraries and wallets out there, and then offers more features, some newer things. It's used for uh, all your creative ideas in terms of protocol and business logic and everything today. And then uh, XRPL mainnet and Zahao, this new network, can cherry pick the best of both worlds and uh, and be stronger together. So what the, the, the gist of it would be Zahao is the XRP ledger plus smart contracts. Yeah, what, a, what an interesting perspective, though. If you think about it, you've created, it, would you say it's a fork of the XRPL? Because I know that you're, 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 you're mirroring the DNA of the XRP uh, ledger, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it does in many ways, which is also why I believe that any developer activity or corporate interest or, or, or games or metaverse or anything that's built on either one of the networks is actually good for both networks and the entire ecosystem because the knowledge you gain can be applied on both networks. And there will be many things XRPL mainnet is and will be much better at so for example if you if you need several stable coins if you need liquidity if you need exchange integrations with every exchange out there uh, there's the xrpl and then if you need smart contracts and custom logic then you have the how and the, and the interesting things the thing is that users who have an r address on one network with their key pair they have the same r address on the other network so it's also very transparent in that way and it makes it really easy for users to actually use the same account on both networks. And I envision a future where wallets and client applications basically abstract the entire multi-network thing away because it speaks the same protocol anyway. You have the same R address. So if you want to do something that involves something that both networks have to offer, uh, you can easily do that in one process where, for example, you uh, source, you get the stable coin on mainnet, and then you move it to the other network using burn to mint, where the same, where you suddenly have the same asset from the same issuer, but on the other network, and then you use it with your smart contract, and then, right? So we can we can do all kinds of interesting things without the user actually having to be fully aware what they're using under the hood. Yeah, exactly, and and that's a that's a perfect segue into my my next question, and and oh. I'd love to explore more on you know that pathway of realizing your your long term goals, Weetzi, and and what ways does Zahao aim to simplify the user experience in regards to smart contract technology, ensuring <clears throat> that seamless integration into everyday applications where they don't they have that sense or lack of sense of uh, realizing that they're using the underlying technology. So what, what in what ways does that Zahao essentially aim to simplify that experience? I, I think the, the best way to look at it today, because it's pretty hard to, uh, uh, to, 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 to envision where we're going, right? But what, what blockchain, what especially the blockchain space is missing today is some of the convenient things and some of the, some of the uh, uh, things necessary for retail adoption that are so common in real life. And then you move to the blockchain world to gain certain things. So what, what you gain is a sort of freedom that you only have in real life with cash, right? It's in your wallet, it's yours. If you wanna set it on fire, you can. If you lose it, it's lost, uh, but no one's gonna tell you what to do with that cash, it's in your yep. wallet. And then the crypto space offers something similar in, in, uh, in, in terms of self-custody. But 
it makes that that cash that you then own on chain uh, way more uh, convenient and you have way more possibilities with it because suddenly you can send it across the world in four seconds and suddenly you can use it in any kind of uh, uh, you, you can use it as anything, right? You can change, you can swap it on a DEX, or you can uh, 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 use it, for example, with with hooks, uh, with smart contracts that offer way more. But what you cannot do are some of the things all of us take for granted with uh, with traditional finance, right? If uh, if so, no one likes losing their cash, so we keep our money at, in the bank, and then if we lose our bank card, we go to the bank and they verify that we are who we say we are and you get a new bank card or a new pin code and um if for example i want to send my entire savings account to someone else i'm going to get a warning and i'm not allowed to do that and i have to change my daily limit and maybe it's going to be on hold till someone confirms that i really want to do that so if someone gets access to my bank account i can trust that the bank protects me and uh um for example in in terms of loyalty uh, there is an expiration date on your loyalty tokens. Uh, so from, from the perspective of a loyalty token issuer, uh, blockchain might be less interesting because they have a couple of requirements in the real world that are not enforceable on a blockchain. Or uh, for example, uh, I, I guess this would be even be an example in, in your, in the link to situation where, uh, uh, for example, stocks cannot be uh, publicly traded at any given time, day, there are conditions, right? And those things, all the things I just mentioned and more, if they can be enforced by a smart contract on the blockchain natively without uh, having to send something to another account which contains the smart contract, but just natively on your own account, uh, we can combine these things. We can buy, combine all the features the blockchain has to offer and all the convenience and new opportunities there and the, the global uh, interaction with the things that consumers need and enterprises need and retail needs to actually put this technology to use. What, a, what an interesting perspective because in, in you, um, spanning off of your example of, of, of link uh, platform, it sounds in, in, your, in your example, for instance, when you mentioned stocks can't be publicly traded or let's just say maybe a, a, a specific uh, understanding we have we're, we're reg regulatory bound and have requirements for some of our investors such as the accredited investor requirements could, yeah. it, it potentially it sounds like those smart contracts could also identify uh, uh id verification potentially yeah so you, you you get this blank canvas and you can you can you can paint whatever you like uh, so in in uh, in case of the the link to business um let's say that you every every person because this is still and a partially offline process, right? These are your own risk profiles, your own rules and, 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 and the regulations you have to comply with. So you'll still have to onboard every user. So you onboard your user in the link to app or on the link to website. And at, at some point you realize that you are dealing with an accredited investor, you did their, the KYC, and now you attest to, to that on, uh, on, Zaha, on the network. And right, and then you build um, a, a network of accounts with these attestations, and then you could configure your issued stocks on Ledger to be only uh, traded with or transferred to people who have these attestations you gave. Mm -hmm. So you can still use the public network, but you get your own uh, uh, your own conditions you can attach to the exchange of value and interactions. Interesting. You know, uh, shifting gears here. Uh, we see you, we've already touched or highlighted on on the the applications of hooks. So I, I apologize if you are, are are reiterating yourself. But for for people in the audience who are like myself, sometimes it's beneficial to to potentially ask a, a similar question and peel the onion back, uh, you know, layer by layer. Of course. But can you give us the skinny on some practical applications of hooks in the XRP ledger for for both enterprise and retail customers? And if you would. Please explain how these hooks modify existing capabilities on the XRP ledger. Yeah, so th that's actually interesting because these are examples I'm going to give now uh, um, actually being developed as we speak. So that 
goes from uh, well, just to name one, expect our metaverse. They could do, for example, uh, some of the, they can do all their metaverse properties and and uh, and and land ownership fully on chain. And then if others want to build applications on top of the same data, they can do that, right? And uh, we are going to focus on retail uh, uh, things, for example, direct debits, where someone wants to debit your account based on what you authorize them to debit. Say you, uh, you're you reading a Wall Street Journal article online, you want to pay per article instead of getting a subscription. Um, and then you don't want to scan a QR code every time that you want to read an article. That's, that's too much effort, right? People not only choose on price and availability, but also on convenience. So Absolutely. you might authorize the Wall Street Journal to direct debit a maximum of $5 per month uh, on your account. And while you're within those limits, you just click read and they send the transaction to your account with the claim. And uh, uh, I don't know if he's here in the space. He would be uh, an interesting person to uh, get up as a speaker for a minute as well. But Evernote's registry is a very good example where you, uh, where you have the Evernote network. And to register resources, uh, they have some custom logic using hooks. Uh, well, plenty of opportunities. I also think that, for example, stablecoin issuers are going to have a very, very great time with hooks because, I mean, we all know that, that regulatory requirements are increasing. And right now they have an upgrade path for their existing stable coins to, uh, to, to be compliant and to enforce some of that compliance on chain. You, you know, uh, before we get into the weeds on uh, regulatory compliance, uh, th I, I do have some questions that I'd love to dive in on uh, later later on in this conversation. We see, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shelf that for a hot second. You know, we've we've been talking about the infrastructure. Let's talk about the data or value that can be managed using hooks, and how does this impact data ownership and management for enterprise clients like Link2, leveraging potentially that aspire to leverage blockchain networks or blockchain technology. Yeah, so in in, um, in the smart contract context, data ownership is something that lives on chain and that uh, can be uh, read and possibly written by an account owner on the chain. And then you have another type of data, which is the data you don't want on chain, the data you want to keep private, which is, for example, your identity document and identity details. Those should never, not even in encrypted form, live on a network, on a blockchain, because it's immutable. The history will be there forever. And if, say, 20 years from now, the encryption we use today is broken, then one could retroactively decrypt that data. So that data doesn't belong on a blockchain, but what does belong on a blockchain is a reference to it. And the way we look at this is the, the attestation model, where you can have a number of parties, for example, doing uh, performing KYC, mm -hmm. and then they have the underlying KYC data in their files, but they can still attest to having done this KYC successfully on chain. And uh, what, you, what you can, can end up with is, um, a list of attributes of attestations belonging to a specific account being vouched for by several entities. So other uh, parties on the ledger could make decisions based on the availability of that data. So for example, uh, just XRPL labs attesting to uh, a successful KYC for your account would not be enough. But if uh, Kraken and Bitstamp and GitHub and XRPL labs all attested to someone uh, uh, being fully KYC successfully, then maybe at some point, if there is a, a data sharing agreement between those parties, we can make it much easier for people to onboard in the next system because there's already a confirmation, right? But this this is all depending on the, the do's and don'ts and requirements uh, within a certain jurisdiction, which is why this is extra interesting because there's no one solution fits all. It depends on uh, where the person is who wants to use your service it depends on where you are as a business offering services and um the, the one side the one fit size fits all is never going to happen we're going to build something that no one can really use and with hooks you can build whatever works for you yep. and then there's also the data that is stored in your own account which lives on chain and it is built. You have a uh, you have one object reserve, just like when you set a trust line on the XRPL. You have a reserve which you get back if you remove the trust line again. Same with data on the uh, on on the ledger, 
but this means that you can you can keep track of certain things in your account you own those objects and then other platforms applications uh, hooks can leverage the data Mm -hmm. and make decisions based on it and then another uh, another thing would be the the oracle like solution where uh, for example chain analysis xrp forensics uh, elliptic you know the, the 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 transaction monitoring entities the account monitoring entities could for example publish a list with accounts uh, and and their uh, their their account level or right, trustworthiness level on chain and then again uh, smart contracts installed on other accounts could read that data and make decisions on it. So this is one of the things we're going to do. XRP Forensics is already out there. Smart wallets already check the list. But then if you use a wallet that doesn't, you can still send to a scammer. And in, in the hooks situation, you can install a hook, opt in, right? As a consumer, you can install a hook that for every outgoing transaction, checks the destination against the XRP forensic list. And then if it's on there, it just prevents the transaction from ever happening. So you're never going to send to a known scammer again without having to use a wallet that even supports this. It's enforced by the chain. Impressive. And I appreciate you bringing up chain analysis. That is a, a link to portfolio uh, company and uh, interesting to, uh, to align that with potential XRP forensics. Uh, shifting gears here, we see, uh, can you shed light on the dynamics of uh, and contributions of the Zahao Launch Alliance? It, it, it's partnerships with it, or uh, aim to enhance Zahao's network and ecosystem. Yeah, I. So when we uh, when we started building uh, the Hooks technology, the uh, and and at some point uh, realized that we were uh, probably going to launch this on another chain first. Not because we want to create another chain, right? But because it's the fa it's the it's the fast track to uh, getting to use the technology. We realized that uh, we bring one thing to the table. We bring code to the table, basically, and uh, and uh, intellectual property to make this happen. But that's not enough to launch a successful network because if people want to use the network for this and and if we want to build on it right you need more you need a trustworthy ecosystem with uh, other players who are actually vetted and audited so you need someone in the accounting and b2b vetting industry someone to keep an eye you need uh, massive infra endeavors you need stable coins uh, and on and off ramps and you need uh, uh you need an integration with something that can do even more uh now we have hooks and uh, so in the launch alliance we have all those things so everyone brings something to the table and we believe that together uh we would be able to to build and commit to building something that we can all actually use right we're stronger together so we we have we had the launch alliance it um uh, it doesn't exist since the actual launch anymore, but we all uh, did everything we could to turn this into a successful launch. And I think uh, the fact that we uh, we are up and running, the network is live, that people are uh, already using it without even proper wallet support, except for uh, for Crossmark, the browser extension, uh, I, I think is uh, to be considered very successful. And then over the course of the next months, we'll get more wallet support, interaction with the network, the, the first developers, are done building their uh, their first hooks and integrations, and uh, it's it's getting really interesting now. It, uh, on that comment, uh, we see because after tuning into uh, Expectar's uh, X Space, uh, you, I, I believe you mentioned that Zum is not yet ca uh, compatible or has the, the the compatibility with the Zaha network or not not yet. Right, that's uh, that's correct. So. Um, you 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 don't want to do too many things at the same time, right? If uh, if if one thing breaks, then all the other things are affected. So we uh, we really like the fact that the the network is out there, the infrastructure is out there. People are building tools. We have uh, four explorers already today, thanks of the th thanks to the existing XRPL builders. And, uh, and and people are, are testing some more. There are some really small uh, uh, bugs that like the things that you wouldn't even notice, but the builders notice, mm -hmm. right? No security issues. We can fix all of those things. We have a lot of interaction without the public pressure and potential questions and and everything that 
you get from the general public if everyone starts to use it. So if you if we just do one thing at a time, right? You'll notice that the network is live and the developers are already using it because they know how to. But the wallet support is limited. Evernote is also uh, pending go live. That will be somewhere in uh, I think December. And um, um, so so all the all the other uh, things that actually ship the technology to the to the to, to the bigger audience that's slightly delayed and i think it allows us to uh, to do everything best to focus on one thing at a time yeah absolutely so it's it, it was a strategic move for uh, for the reasons of of not yet releasing the the zum capabilities to the zao yeah and it's and it's re resource constraints as well right i uh, i i think that building an entire layer one smart contract platform for the xrp ledger protocol is uh is <laughs> is something that needs all your attention and it's a miracle that we even pulled it off uh hats off to to richard and uh, and dennis as well and then uh building uh, a very good secure wallet with interaction with all the developers in this space is also a full-time job and uh building evernote another full-time job by the by the evernote team right so all of these things require uh your attention and require 200 percent of your effort so it would be a huge mistake if we all try to launch it at the same time and then uh basically end up with a lot of confusion and lack of proper uh, resources to support so um yeah and we're not in a hurry right we've the xrpl is uh, is is alive and kicking for over 10 years yep and we're here now and uh i i think we have another 10 years for this to become the huge success we're we're aiming at so and, and by that time, we'd see our kids will probably work be working with alongside of us. <laughs> uh, they're already trying to, <laughs> but they're they're breaking more than they're actually contributing. <laughs> That's funny. Good for you, sir. Uh, well, hey, uh, uh, shifting gears uh, once more. How does uh, sourcing Zahao XRP from burned XRP improve system security, and what implications does this have for the overall supply and market behavior of Zahao XRP? Interesting uh, question and asked a lot actually, and I understand how it can be very confusing for for people. So this is, I think, something that uh, people deserve to hear again, even if they already heard it. Um, so we we changed last minute, by the way, from Zahao XRP to uh, to the uh, XAH ticker ZA because it was too confusing uh, to have two of the same assets living on different chains if it's not a uh, two way uh, flow. So. It's what we did here is completely different from actually what most networks and side chains and sister chains and how you how you call them uh, did, where you usually have a bridge, and then it allows you to move assets from one chain to the other and then back, which is actually problematic, uh, mostly because of two uh, two two things that we see almost every day. One, bridges get hacked. Even the best, even the most capable teams and even the best auditors launch bridges that eventually get hacked. It's just so, so com complex. And the incentives to, to hack a bridge are huge if it, if it actually locks up a lot of funds. And uh, someone somewhere or, uh, at night uh, behind a computer can work full time on trying to break it. And eventually they will find something. So we didn't want a bridge because of the security risks. We also didn't want a bridge, a bridge because of the compliance risks, right? So um, you, you might find a jurisdiction that allows you to run that bridge and operate that bridge today, or or maybe doesn't even regulate it. But that's not what you want to do, and you want to uh, allow everyone to use the bridge in a compliant and, and secure way. And with everything that's going on. Uh, the, the uncertainty, but also the rules that uh, come with the certainty in different jurisdictions, just make it very hard to offer uh, bridging functionality. So we 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 were looking for something that that didn't lock up funds in a bridge. We were looking for something that didn't result in us doing an ICO. Right? We don't want to sell a million tokens to fund our network operations. This should be available to all. Um, and and we didn't want to do uh, like an initial DEX offering and then have to deal with uh, all the uh, regulatory uh, requirements there. But we do need uh, a native asset that allows people to pay for network fees and satisfy account reserves to prevent spam to help the network function. Um, so we realized that actually all we needed was 
not another native asset that we would just, I don't know, sell to everyone. We needed a native asset that people could just obtain mm -hmm. uh, without, without uh, guaranteeing a way back, right? You want to use the network or you don't. We're not asking you to transfer your savings. If you want to use the network, you only need a couple of XRP equivalent to pay for your reserves and transaction fees. And then if you're out of uh, uh, assets, out of the native asset, and you want to use the network some more, well, then you, you bring over a little bit more in small increments. And the, the, I think the best comparison is bus tickets. If you intend to ride the bus, you're getting a bus ticket. If you're going to ride the bus every day of every month, you're going to get a bunch of bus tickets in advance so you don't have to go to the ticket office every time. And then uh, uh, you don't really care if bus tickets are going to be 10% more expensive or less expensive in a year because you're, you're going to need them now anyway. Um, so people would have to give up something of value to mint something of value and and help it to pay for the network fees and actually because we have smart contracts we could do this fully automatically where we know uh uh the the we know the unl from mainnet so if zahao is aware of the unl and you can provide proof to zahao that you burn something on mainnet then we are 100% certain that it's out of circulation, can be used again. We don't have to lock it up in the bridge. And then we can just remint the equivalent on the Zahao network. And what happened now is you gave up something of value, which you used to mint something of value, being the ability to pay for network fees. So it's a very, very clean way where you as a user just interact uh, programmatically with both networks and doing so, so there's no middleman, there's no bridge, there's no risk. It's just you and a connection to either network, which allows you to mint some ZA uh, on the Zaha network to use the network. And it's uh, everyone benefits, right? Because uh, no one's being sold uh, an asset that's created out of thin air just to basically to fundraise. Uh, 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 so no one uh, uh, see, has has a, a has their funds in the bridge that might be as, at risk. The supply of XRP on mainnet actually decreases if people use burn to mint, mm -hmm. and we get uh, a native asset created on Zahao, uh, just purely on what based on what you did on mainnet without a middleman, without anyone. And then if if people want to go back. That's possible, but through secondary markets or through IOUs, GitHub, for example, will issue XRP on Zahao and Za on Mainnet. So there will be a secondary market, but we don't have to worry about the secondary market because there's always the fallback. There's always burn to mint. Interesting. Very, very interesting. How is Zahao addressing regulatory compliance, especially concerning the burn to mint mechanism and other key features? Yeah, so we we had uh, we we had of course uh, the professionals look at the compliance. We at, at XRPL Labs because we are uh, registered with the Dutch Central Bank for other services on and off ramp. In some, for example, we already have a relationship with the with our lawyers. We have a compliance officer in the board, and everyone looked at it. And there's just burn to mint is just the cleanest way. So there are no there are no regulatory requirements for burn to mint today. And um, uh, I mean, if, if, if we would have a bridge, it would have been a flat out no by, by our compliance officer. Uh, so this, we actually needed this. And then whatever other compliance requirements arise, as I mentioned, uh, don't have a one size fits all solution. There is no one compliance and there is no one universal being compliant it depends on the services you're offering it depends on the jurisdiction you're in it depends on the jurisdiction your client is in um and it and it's also not a uh, something that's in standstill right what you do today might not be enough to satisfy the requirements one and a half years from now which yeah. is actually why we need hooks because um build what you need to help the network stay compliant you know, as you as you were uh, making that final comment, uh, we'd see. For me, I was, I always seem to uh, relate things back to Link Two in our business model because obviously it, I eat, sleep, and breathe uh, Link Two, and being the fact that we are a we have a global presence, a global reach, we're democratizing access to the world of private equity. Uh, you know, I, 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 when you say different jurisdictions or dependent on the services we provide, or it's it's just 
it's very relatable, uh, especially with this technology that like you're building with Zahao and how th it's scalable and can tap into and overlap into various jurisdictions and things of that nature. And so you have to be conscious and cognitive of just so many moving parts. So I, I, I commend you and, and your team uh, and, and wonderful world-class developers. And, and especially like, as you mentioned, your, 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 your legal team or the, the big dogs, uh, you know, what is, what is the house primary goals in fostering a supportive community for developers and retail participants? And how do you think your efforts will contribute to innovation within the XRPL community? Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so what, what we want for, for developers and enterprise and retail is to find a network they can actually use no matter what. So that's, that's actually what smart contracts bring to this space. No matter what you're going to face in your building process, you can be certain that if it's, if a feature you need is not natively available, that you at least can add it, that you can build it. So what, what we add to start with is all the good things XRPL plus the fact that you know that you're going to be able to finish the job, get it done. And then within that context, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of opportunities. And um, I, I hope with XRPL Labs that we'll be focusing the next five years on, on retail, which mm -hmm. is payments or micro, different kinds of payments, right? Micro payments, machine to machine payments, um, not getting a subscription, but buying the, the individual article. And then maybe uh, learn that you like it so much that you get the subscription after all. Uh, charging your car small amounts where the fees are actually uh, uh, making the, the transactions unviable. Make them viable, combine them uh, uh, with loyalty and with other features, with, with the tokenization of anything relevant, and basically build a, um, a digital cash wallet, cash in the sense of you own it, no one can touch it. It's, it's like the cash in your, in your letter wallet and yep. like the loyalty cards in your letter wallet and everything, and then uh, turn that into a digital product that does can be uh, a global wallet. Right, any currency anywhere in the world, because we're we're using an application on the internet that lives here, and we're buying st things on another website there, and we're charging our car, and we're you're paying for so many different things. I think we will see way more payments, but lower value payments, and all kinds of different tokenized products, and they sh they actually all belong in one uh, easy to use universal wallet that lives on your phone. Yeah, you must have a you must have an electric car, Weezy. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you, you, you gave that example a couple of times. And, and for me, I also drive a, a fully electric vehicle myself. And, and I, as, as you were, as you mentioned that, that light bulb clicked for me because I sit, I, it, it, what, side note, the, the electric vehicle community is very interesting because, you know, you go, we can go charge. There's people that go and charge their vehicle any time of the day, even in the middle of the night. And it's like a little community. People just talk to each other while they're having their cars charge. And, but as, as, as the vehicle's charging, you're watching the, 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 bill in, the bill, which could be tied into a various applications tied into then your Apple Smart Pay or, or things of that nature. And it's all dialed in. Uh, and, and I'm sure it's via API calls and things of that nature, those would be the, the, first real world applications that could get tied to blockchain is am i yep. wrong with that yes but there's another aspect to it that people don't realize yet i think uh the, the the reason why i like the car charging example and bike charging as well right but then it becomes really dutch charging your cargo bike and stuff <laughs> but uh so i i prefer the, the car charging so for one thing we know that this is going to be a huge market because uh right now we have the early adopters but we all know that depending on where you live within seven or 10 or 15 or 20 years, it's going to be the only type of car that's being sold just because governments push for it. Right. Wow. So you're going to see increased adoption no matter what. And then another interesting thing is the thing people completely forget because the, the car charging that's we're only to talking about the demand side and in the demand side. Yeah, maybe we use Apple pay and maybe uh, they will charge over Apple pay to your credit card. And maybe the, the, the charging companies are fine paying uh, 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 like uh, single or double digit transaction fees. Uh, the, we don't really know if we can make a huge difference there. Uh, except if you get adoption across the board and it's just easier and more convenient to have this one universal wallet that you use for everything. Yeah. But there's also the supply side. And the supply side, 
right now is just your 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 grid company, your grid contract, your your energy company. But in many places, that is not working out because everyone's going to be charging at the most inconvenient times for the grid companies, and we're going to need more interesting solutions when it comes to uh, 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 electricity. The availability of the electricity you need to charge your car as well. We're going to a world where you have a local or local area storage, or where you have microgrids, local community microgrids, for example, just because. The grid cannot live up to the demands in certain places uh, all at the same time. And if if you're looking at the supply side as well, then tokenizing things becomes even more interesting because maybe I don't want to pay for charging my car to this big enterprise company that provides charging infrastructure everywhere. Maybe in my own neighborhood, there's a local storage battery for, for the community and maybe I need to pay that community for using the electricity at that moment. And then, um, then an open network for the exchange of value becomes really important. Yeah. And that's actually where blockchain technology thrives. Uh, so I think we're gonna, I, I, I think we're still uh, thinking way too narrow minded about why we would use blockchain for payments, because it's we're not only changing the demand side, the supply ch side is going to change significantly as well, where everyone you it's a spoken hub model, right, where um, anyone should be able to to transact with anyone. Uh, and where you might not have a central authority that charges you through Apple Pay, because we have all kinds of small uh, 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 institutions or small communities or small uh, uh, um, groups who might want to be paid as well and who do not have a relationship with a payment service provider and Apple Pay and, and God knows what. So it's, it's the universal open exchange of value yeah. that is really going to uh, really gonna make the technology very interesting for real life use instead of just the, the speculative use we see today. Yeah, exactly. On that topic of utility and decentralization, can you uh, can you provide it, 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 some additional examples of the types of smart contracts uh, that Zahao aims to enable, and how do these align with the ecosystem's overarching ob objectives? Mm, it's it's very hard for me to um, to to answer this from the Zahao perspective because I mean Zahao is a network and it offers a blank canvas to everyone so mm -hmm. we'll see what everyone's building but I, um, I I I I can share some of the things as XRPL Labs in with some for example and with the example I just gave you where we're talking about more a uh, retail focused wallet where the blockchain is abstracted away we are going to take the features uh traditional finance offers today the things people expect the things you cannot uh, penetrate retail with uh, without can, we're can gonna you, can you give a couple of those examples yeah of course so the, i i mentioned the direct debit okay we uh tap and go is uh is is everywhere right you just tap your phone apple pay and and you're on your way you paid for something and um we we cannot use blockchain for actual payments if it isn't at least as convenient and scanning a QR code and having to swipe right and showing your face ID is less convenient, not mm -hmm. equally convenient. And um, I, I gave the example for like all kinds of different consumer protection examples. And I also really like uh, the example of, of recovery, account recovery. If, if you lose your, your bank card, you're going to get a new one. You don't lose the value. And in the crypto space, somehow we feel it's okay that we say, well, you lost everything because you lost your key. You should have written it down. You should have kept a copy or where you kept a copy of your key in your cloud account and someone gets access to your uh, apple id and then they uh, they look through your photos and screenshots and find your secret well you should have protected your account better it's just <laughs> it's just not the way we're never gonna see any retail adoption if if it comes with these uh examples which means that we have to do better in the entire blockchain space. And um, there, there are several ideas out there to do better, but they're also very volatile, or right? everyone's still um, inventing things and coming up with better implementation. So if we would look for a native implementation on chain, we would be too late. One, it's gonna take a long time. Two, by the time we, we, we have it done, uh, the, the world is three steps ahead. So, the way to do this right now would be to build a hook and to allow for, for example, social recovery, where uh, because online everything can be scammed, right? Especially with uh, 
with, with, with AI today and things like mid journey and all kinds of examples, anyone can make a clip in your voice with your face in real time. So you cannot trust anything online. So some of these things are we, just are we really are we really talking to Weetzi right now? Is it is this you Weetzi with the this is yeah this is this is me. <laughs> well, well, you you will never find out, man. But um, <laughs> uh, I I I hope you like the answers uh, uh, with it being me or not being me. But uh, we, no. we, we love your so, answers. Yeah, so everything can be fake. So the only thing you can really trust is, uh, uh, is, is the physical interaction. So, for example, for account recovery, um, if, you, if you set up your account, and then let's take a retail application, for example, you onboard in one click. You're in a store, you want their loyalty program, you scan a QR, you get the app, and you're done. You're right there. Within 30 seconds, you should be onboarded, ready to use. Yep. And then when you get home, when you have some time, the app can inform you about what you have to do to keep your account safe. And that wouldn't be, here are 40 digits, write them down. And it shouldn't be, here are 24 words in a language you don't even speak. Oh, wow. Uh, to keep your account safe. Yeah. So what, what would happen is um, uh, a match with uh, other people you might know who already use the same technology or can be uh, asked to install the app. And then you visit uh, your mother the next day and you're at the office after the weekend where a coworker has, uh, uh, has the app installed as well. And then your partner also does. So you're in the same room, you do a Bluetooth, a BLE handshake or like a, a NFC handshake, right? phone to phone. Mm -hmm. And then you vouch for each other that you know each other in real life. And then whenever you lose your phone, your account is gone, everything is, 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 has to be uh, recovered. You get your new phone, you install the app and you uh, go to visit the same people and you get your account back. And those people will not vouch for you if it's not you in their face. Right, so this is actually very simple, very secure, and it can come with all kinds of uh, uh, add-on features that we can now build. You know, you mentioned NFC handshake in that uh, a light bulb click for me because I had the opportunity of uh, interviewing the uh, CFO of Brash Labs, who I believe is uh, creating NFC chips and uh, leveraging Zhaohao network. Is that does that ring a bell? We see. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I, I know a thing or two about what he's building and his vision, and I, uh, I like it, and I, I think we're going to see all kinds of interesting examples where, where we uh, can combine uh, the things around us, real world, tangible things, with all the advantages the blockchain has to offer. Excellent. You know, as as the how moves forward, well, at, and before we conclude here, uh, we see we have about. Uh, Five more minutes before uh, uh, we we uh, reach reach the hour on this call, and I'd lo I'd love to open this up. I believe uh, we have Richard, the CTO of of XRPL Labs, up here on stage as well. So I I, I want to make sure that we give him a moment to speak if if uh, if he's got something to say. But before we before we get there, I do want to ask one final question: uh, as Zahao moves forward towards full functionality and decentralization. What strategies are, are being employed to increase awareness and adoption um, amongst both developers and end users in the blockchain community? Um, yeah, so I, we, people might have different ideas and I, I welcome them and reach out if you do, but I, I do think that we shouldn't focus directly on the end user because um, they really have no business using the network unless they have something interesting to use. So that, that would be uh, businesses and uh, developers. So the developers were, the existing developer ecosystem we're already in touch with and we've been sharing regular updates and we're spending a lot of time and effort because we love to, to help them achieve their goals and to explain everything. And I really hope that uh, the next couple of years we're gonna find some budget to, uh, to do this in a, in a, in a more, more professional way and basically turn this into uh, uh, like a developer supporting building, building on Zaha and also building the right tooling, right? Because we should make a life of, for developers as easy as possible. And uh, we have some tooling out there. We have some ideas about where we should go and uh, we, should, we should find, and this, I'm working on this, we should find the resources to make that happen. And then if developers and businesses bring interesting things, then they will target their users and their users will uh, use the network, uh, possibly even without realizing they're using the network. 
which is actually great because maybe we can grow the crypto space times five the next five years but maybe if we uh, do something interesting in the retail space we can onboard a million users without even realizing that they're using wow. the blockchain but if if these users all use the blockchain and they want to use their stable coins this is going to bring uh use and liquidity and and um like a, a critical audience for the next thing they want to use on the same network, right? So we, we should take both angles. We should uh, foster and, and grow the crypto ecosystem. But well, just as important is building things for people who aren't even realizing they're using blockchain, but they get the advantages without knowing it. That, that's going to get the, the, the real flywheel effect going in and that true aha moment. You know, it's so funny before, before we shift gears here, I, I always, I, I wanted to do a, an icebreaker before we started because, you know, I, when I first found out about Zahao network, I, I, I how do you pronounce this, the name? Zahao. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zahao. So, but for me, I always, I was going, is it Zahu, Zahao, or is it X aha? From all the, the the technology that you guys are, are... I like all of them. Um, <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, uh, um, like how they talk about you, if they talk about you, right? So, <laughs> no, but it's 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 a how, and I think people will uh, will will quickly quickly learn, and oh. I think it will be uh, something. Um, in, in a couple of years, people. Oh, I, I, just I, think, know. I, I think I think it's much easier to learn than than link to. Uh, there's a there's a lot of struggles that we see out in the in the community, the greater uh, crypto sphere and beyond of of uh, the pronunciation of of link to. And so it's a uh, I I, can, I share I share I share your your your, your similar struggles, uh, Uitsi. Uh, now, hey, uh, Richard, we got you up on stage here, sir. Is there any uh, any uh, final words you'd like to close off with, sir? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, hey, thank you I, for I would, joining. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, Zahao is open for business. Developers, uh, you might be surprised uh, just how much you can do with Zahao. Um, we've written a, a very comprehensive uh, smart contract platform that's lightweight and inexpensive. And uh, if you've had uh, projects that you've wanted to do on the XRP ledger in the past and you just couldn't quite get past that one roadblock, uh, give it a try. We've got lots of documentation. There'll be uh, links in this uh, space probably, um, and uh, reach out. We're always uh, uh, happy to help developers. Absolutely. And on that comment, well, we see a rich. Uh, what 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 are some of the resources available or pathways for uh, hungry developers to reach out and uh, who who are interested in participating in the evolution of Zahao or the XRPL blockchain in, in, in greater. I think there are there are some uh, discourse for the existing XRPL. They have a Zahao and Hooks space as well. We have our uh, Zahao and Hooks documentation, both the common documentation and the technical documentation, building Hooks. There's the Hook Builder online on uh, hooks.xrpl.org where people can just jump in, get some samples, deploy them to the testnet and use Hooks uh, in real time. And there's a lot of uh good stuff on github where we also have the discussion board where people can ask questions and hit the ground running with some of the samples we can provide excellent and then on zahow.network on the website uh there's it's currently just a placeholder but we uh we will add a, a builders section there with some Ooh. examples and tooling uh, dennis also built a lot of tooling for developers so uh, it, it should be all uh, curated there uh and one one thing i'd like to add to what richard just said uh, specific, specifically aimed at, at, at Link2. Okay. Uh, I, I see a lot of opportunity for Link2 to uh, open their business on DLT as well. Uh, but it requires all the all the things we spoke about, right? You will have to uh, make uh, things oblige regulatory requirements and your your own uh, 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 requirements. If at some point you'd like to discuss doing this on the XRPL protocol technology with Hooks, open invitation, uh, our team w who built the technology, so I think we, we know a lot about it, uh, would be very willing to help Link to make this happen. You know, we see what, what I'll do after this call is, is uh, uh, send an email over to uh, uh, our, our, our president, Joseph Mendoza, and, and yeah. I'll, I'll see you. Know yeah, it, it, we'll, we'll go from there because I know Joe has uh, come out and communicated uh, uh, publicly that we aspire to uh, build our exchange on on the XRP ledger and and, and full transparency. I even I, I was uh, fortunate enough uh, to to travel to uh, Portugal for Link2's 
uh, global investor conference where our, our CEO had had uh, uh, confirmed that and put that on his slide deck and presentation. So I, I think, uh, and then also with having our, our VP of Ledger, Matt Rosenden, I've, I've, uh, I've been fortunate to uh, build a, a good a good relationship and friendship with him. And, and been uh, when I went to Apex, uh, uh, for Ripple's Apex, I got to see firsthand some some really great uh, 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 a demo of of some interesting uh, technology that 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 they've built as well. So I think there's a great for great potential for synergies, uh, and I'm happy to to explore those uh, w- with you and and the, and the team uh, we team. But uh, on that note, you know we're, we, we've we've been on the call for an hour, and it, and this has just been. Uh, amazing so thank you Weetzi, for your invaluable insights and for sharing your expertise with, with us today y- your deep dive into the world of zahao and the xrp ledger has been surely exciting we're all looking forward to seeing your your team's developments come to life i'm sure in the near future uh for those interested in learning more about the cutting edge solutions that we and his team are working on give them a follow and make sure you're engaged in the conversation also the link to team is always available to address your inquiries and discussions you may have. Like crypto, link to's platform is open 24-7, 365. We'll be back here next week with an exclusive link to fireside chat. That again, that's a link to fireside chat Zoom webinar. Link to's senior investment specialist, Blair Bonner, will be reviewing how many Link2 members are investing in high quality private companies using their self-directed IRAs. The fireside chat will be hosted via Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to register. We thank you all for joining us on this wonderful Friday. Thank you all for tuning in today to Link2's exclusive X space. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. And here's to happy and informed investing. Weetzi, Richard, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all in the audience for joining us. I see plenty of Team Apollo members, top investors on the platform. Love you, Mucho. Have a great rest of your day. Again, Weetzi, thank you so much. You are an absolute gentleman and a scholar, sir. Thank you. Have a great day and weekend.